Hi guys, welcome to another Hui4 video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's not really a challenge video, and it's not really one of those, you know, shorter videos. Well, technically it is a challenge, and challenge is to make 50 Chinas. You might have watched my last video, if you didn't, I recommend you to watch it. I'll put the link in the corner, so you can click it. If you don't feel like watching it though, it's basically about the double puppets, or, you know, puppets of a puppet. There's probably about 10 ways you can make a double puppet, however I mentioned 3. The one where Slovakia gets to be your double puppet, while Hungary is your puppet. The one where uh, Australia gets the puppet British Malaya and the UK has British Malaya's double puppet. And also the one where Manchukuo gets to puppet Tibet and Japan has Tibet as its double puppet. Today we'll be making a video about this one here in Asia, not the one in the Southeast Asia, the one in Eastern Asia. Where Manchukuo can puppet Tibet, making uh, Tibet Japan's double puppet. After that I simply exploited some game features to create 50 Chinas. For this, you would require some RNG. You would require two things. The first thing is not that important, it's good, but it's not necessary. And that's for Manchukuo to go for obedience path, which they always do on historical uh, focuses, but also for them to go for Vasalize Meguko, and more importantly, national cooperation government, which gives them course on all of China, pretty much, all of the Chinese course. That doesn't have to happen, but it's a bonus. And the second thing is, also pure RNG, but that one is really required, and that's to focus Integrate Tibet. Manchukuo does it, eventually, on historical era focuses, but Tibet doesn't always accept. And the worst thing is, if you load back the save, their answer is not gonna change. Well, you can't really change it, you have to restart the run and hope that next time they say yes. So, really the only way you can counter this RNG is either by cheating, or in my scenario I did it in multiplayer, so basically all I needed was Besides me playing Japan, a Manchukuo player, and I also need a Tibet player, who we'll basically sit there all game doing nothing, and then when they get ultimatum to become a puppet of Manchukuo, they just say yes. After that, my goal was to simply save the game and just continue in my single player world. So yeah, without further ado, let's get to the video. Anyway guys, hi again. This is me in the multiplayer. I got Jake right here playing as Manchukuo, and I got another guy playing as Tibet. Manchukuo player is gonna rush the... Integrate Tibet focus and also national cooperation government focus. Of course, you can do this in the single player, but Tibet would have to accept the ultimatum from Machuko and become its puppet. And apparently, Jake wants to steal land lease from me. And Tibet player wants to order 66 me. Yeah, what have I done? So, what I did, I obviously declared war on China. My goal was to conquer all of China through any means necessary. So, the first thing Machuko player did was go for the Integrate Tibet focus, after which the Tibet player had accepted it and became the puppet of Manchukuo, as you can see, Tibetan Empire. And then he abruptly left, because that's all he had to do really. For some reason China became extremely easy to take. In the peace deal I decided to take the Chinese navy obviously and to annex all of China, all of Yunnan, all of Xinjiang, all of Guangxi Peak, all of Communist China and all of Shangxi except for one state. I didn't want to take the last state because I wanted them to exist. You see, they were in the Chinese United Front, and I still have a war goal against them, which I can use later on, because Marco Forbridge Incident also gives you a war goal against Shangji. And since they're the only country left in their faction, they're obviously gonna be the faction leader, which would make them a major country. For some reason, Shibei Sanma didn't join this war, however, Xinjiang did, so in the meantime, I did justify against Shibei Sanma. I decided not to give China to Manchukuo yet, because Manchukuo has no course, plus, I have compliance buff. So my next goal was obviously taking out the Shibei Sanma. One very important detail that I didn't mention was that I dismantled the faction in the meantime before getting Tibet as my double puppet. Why? Well, I didn't want to be stuck in my faction forever. My goal is to first unite all of China except for that little state in Shangji. Initially I wanted to fight Portugal and after that France and the rest of the allies just to get Macau, Guangzhou Wan and uh, Hong Kong, but I decided not to do it in the test run since it would take forever, multiplayer is pretty slow. So I instead took the curve on Shangji and just gave my division's orders to attack. Basically if everything went as planned, they would join the Chinese United Front, but it didn't, so it's alright. I have to wait for truce against Shangji anyway, which is gonna take until September 1936. That's another thing to mention about Japan. For some reason truces take so long, usually they take only about one month, but with Japan, they take about half a year. Shibei Sanma was acting really weird. They just have random divisions in random provinces standing there and doing nothing like zombies. But that was really useful for me. I could simply walk into their capital. And once again, I'm just going to annex them fully. I had to wait for Manchukuo to finish national cooperation government focus. They were only at obedience, so we had to wait for another five focuses or so. 
And at that point I was really just bored and I decided to attack Portugal anyway. So I did the good old trick, setting naval invasion to land into Italy, and then setting an actual naval invasion from somewhere in Italy into the southern Portugal. Oh, and yes, I had to ask Italy for the military access, obviously. Then I simply had to send my divisions manually into Genoa. Anyway, I declared war on Portugal and did my naval invasion. However, I did forget Macau, but I don't mind. They were just walking into the territories that I don't core anyway, spending their divisions on maintaining that front line while I take out their core territory. After landing in Portugal, I encircled one division and then I just marched up north to get the victory points. Once again, I took their navy, just like with China. Because it doesn't matter how big it is, it's really useful. And then I just annexed them fully. In the meantime, Manchuko was doing Chinese leadership focus, which means the next focus was the one which I needed them to do. And finally, the Manchuko has finished the focus, which gave them the course on the entirety of China. So the logical thing I did after that, I simply returned them out of territory. They now had everything except for Menguko, which they will vassalize in the next focus. Anyway, I forgot one key element. I need lots of divisions, basically Order 66 divisions. I decided to go for the infantry, because infantry is simply requiring less guns to train. Anyway, my initial plan was this. I would acquire war on Tibet, and then I would end up in a peace deal with my puppet Manchuko, because I'll be at war with them. And I would simply puppet the other Manchuko in one state. However, there is one major flaw with that method, because, as I previously said, truces with Japan are so long. So yeah, one China per every six months. So I had to develop a better method, which I did, which I'm gonna show you right now. In the meantime, I took Vazalized Menguko, annexing them. In the meantime, I did garrison order all across China. Now, yes, I, technically I would have to capitulate the entire China, but it's not that hard, since Machuko capitulates at 20% of their victory points, not 5% like the regular China does. So it shouldn't be that hard. All I had to do now was wait for my divisions to deploy. Once my divisions got into position, I declared war on Shangji. Keep in mind, Shangji is the only member and the leader of Chinese United Front, making them a major country. They're really easy to take out as well, they have only one state and only about 4 or 5 divisions. I did this so that I can justify quickly, because they're a major country I can justify with only 10 days. Next thing I do, I justify against Tibet, or the Tibetan Empire, which is puppet of my puppet, Manchuko. Anyway, justification on Tibet was finished and I declared war on them right away. This instantly put me at war with my puppet, Manchuko. Anyway, I capitulated my puppet, but here's the thing. If I check the war tab, I'm actually at war with myself. This is one very important detail, because, you know, when you get new puppets while at war with somebody, those puppets are instantly going to be at war with that country. If you would, for example, be at war with Soviet Union, then you create collaboration government in, I don't know, Micronesia or whatever, that puppet of Micronesia would be at war with the Soviet Union. So by using that logic, what happens next? My new puppet is gonna be at war with me, because I'm at war with myself. I know it doesn't make sense, but trust me, it does. By the way, by doing nothing, I have Manchuko as my puppet and Tibetan Empire as my double puppet. By using the puppet option, I can get a new puppet in any state. So what I'm actually doing is getting a new puppet, but not in one state, but in every single state except for one. I chose this state. And now I confirm an exit. I'm still gonna have my old puppet in that state, but now I am instantly at war with my new puppet. And I'm basically doing Order 66 against them as well. And yeah, both of them are my puppets, but the old puppet has been pieced out. And just a couple of days later, this Manchuko also capitulated. Once again, puppet the next Manchuko in every single state except for one. And repeat. Rinse and repeat. After blue Manchuko, we're fighting the purple Manchuko, and once again, do the same process, puppet in every state except for one. Anyway, these puppets are using the dynamic tax D something. It's a number, it's from D04 all the way up to D75. It used to be D50 until I bought alone and now launch update, now it's D75. However, in my test run, I came into one issue. You see, after D55 tag, my game would simply crash. Because, for some reason, tags from 56 to 75 were simply not working. Which meant that I had 55 dynamic tags, but keep in mind, three of them are reserved for Spanish Civil War, which means only 52. And there's 61 state in China, so I don't have enough tags. But let's not forget, I don't have Wang Zhuan in Hong Kong, making it 59. And I can create some other puppets, like one China, one Shangji, one Yunnan. You get what I mean. So I just kept doing the same thing over and over again. Shangji was kind of being an issue here, however, since they were at war with my newest puppet. But usually they didn't have enough score to do anything. 
At this point, I decided to set the Lightning Cuckoo. As I previously said, I needed more tags, so I had to do this. And while Germany was taking land in Europe, I was doing this. Yeah. Throughout the time, I also made a Sync Young Puppet right here. A Shiba Isan Ma Puppet in their least populated state. Also made Guko where it belongs. I also made this regular China. This time it's not Taiwan, it's Hainan. And I made the Communist China in Macau, something they're never gonna have in real life. Of course, they are my puppets. They're not really communists, they're fascists, but... Their original tag is of the Communist China. For some reason, Italy was still sending me guns. Thanks, Italy. What I did notice in my test run was that new tags, beyond the tag 50, are more vibrant and more colorful. As you can see, these colors are very repetitive and very boring. The new tags have really nice colors, but the issue with them is that most of them don't work. Only five do. Talking about tag colors, I almost reached the end of my journey, and here are the vibrant colors. As you can see, this is hot pink. Yes, that's one of those new colors, and I believe after that comes the black color. Yeah, it was the black color, as you can see. These are the new tags, so I basically reached tag D51, and that's D52, which means I'm soon gonna run out of tags. I believe the next tag is bright orange. It is! And that's it. That's our last puppet. After this, we have nothing else. And yeah, all we gotta do is win a war against them. The end of League of Nations, alright. And now, all we gotta do is wait for the last peace conference and simply either puppet them or do nothing. You can just confirm an exit. They're still gonna be your puppet. So yeah, I finished that. I definitely didn't cheat. I can't even bring up the console because I'm playing on multiplayer. I'm alone. I'm alone online, but I can't cheat. So the only remaining thing that was left to do was to take out Shangri finally. For that, I would have to call in my puppets. However, once again, I ended up inviting them into war against me, which somehow led to Shangji stealing one of my puppets. I can puppet them in one state and let them exist in the other state. And the old Shangji, which was moved to this state down here, was justified against. I just need to wait for the truce. Uh, at that point I realized that I'm stuck in the perpetual war. A war with Major. Myself, pretty much. So I definitely made a mistake here. All I had to do was puppet Shangji fully, call them to war, and then puppet them again in the peace conference making two puppet Shangjis. So by being at war with myself, I realized that I can now make tons of puppets out of everyone, not only China. Puppets are gonna either sooner or later start doing industry focuses. I decided to count all the factories that I actually own. I counted exactly 100 factories, although I could be wrong. So I was getting 135 factories from my puppets alone. Anyway, I waited for the truce to expire, then I justified against that Shangri again, and just took them out. Of course, just puppeting them. Anyway, this was the end result. Oh wait, yeah, I'm at war with them. I have to redo it again. Yeah, I have to puppet them one more time. So yeah, that's what I did. That means I would have 61 puppets. Look at this, I have these normal puppets up here, and then it's just this. Every single one is Imperial Protector of Manchukuo. And yeah, every single one of them has a generic leader. Some of them are really good. I could actually snipe for them, but I don't feel like it. One of them could be the best leader ever. One of them could also have the funniest name ever. This guy is kind of interesting. He's an economist and fortification engineer at the same time. So yeah, using this method, I split up China. Now one thing I should note, that if you do this on your own, try not to fail. Try not to load back, because when you load back, then it no longer works. You have to, once again, just find Tibet, attack Tibet, and just do that. That's because for some reason you just peace out yourself. But if you don't load back, if you don't change your saves, you are to war with yourself indefinitely. I believe, but I didn't test it, but I think that you can do this with other countries as well, using this method, going to war with yourself, puppeting a country, therefore you'll be instantly at war with them, your own puppet, then puppeting a new one, etc etc you get the idea so yeah guys that's how we can have 61 china in hearts of iron 4 even without cheating with just some rng really the only rng part is the manchuko puppet in tibet which happens in about 90 maybe maybe 1943 on historical AI focuses however of course they can say no so you have to restart by the way i lied i don't have 61 china puppets i have 59 because i don't have hong kong and wong juan so yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did enjoy, like, share and subscribe, if you want I can do more content about this double puppet thing, because it's really a rabbit hole, I can go deeper into it, it just breaks the laws of the game literally, you can probably do many more silly things. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the next one. Bye.